topic is the sit-in movement. And of course, we're talking to attorney uh, Julian Blackshear. And of course, uh, attorney Blackshear, let's uh, allow you to uh, continue our conversation before we uh, head our commercial break. Yeah, I really wanted to make emphasize the importance of the fact that there were uh, uh, non-students, mm -hmm. hardworking people, mm -hmm. uh, and leaders of the various cities uh, that gave aid and comfort mm -hmm. to the members of SNCC by uh, putting up the bail money and, mm -hmm. and things of this type. And, and again, you had uh, high school students mm -hmm. uh, who participated in the demonstrations. And you had uh, white, white college students uh, that participated mm -hmm. in the demonstrations. But as a general proposition, mm -hmm. on balance, mm -hmm. it was almost exclusively black college students mm -hmm. who formed, organized, mm -hmm. and structured the Student Nonviolent Coordinating mm -hmm. Committee, mm -hmm. thus the name Student mm -hmm. Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Now, I always wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm one of that rare breed that mm -hmm. feels that he was called into the profession. Mm -hmm as opposed to choosing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to that extent, I'm a natural born lawyer, mm -hmm. as my son would tell mm -hmm. me. So I knew that's, that was, to, so that was educational to me, mm -hmm. to be a part of the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I now am at a position where I can understand the legal basis mm -hmm. uh, for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Mm -hmm. When I was in SNCC, mm -hmm. I knew why the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was formed mm -hmm. because of the pressure mm -hmm. that the students in their sit-in demonstrations mm -hmm. were imposing upon national government to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they knew they had to do something. Mm -hmm. But now, as an attorney, I know the legal basis that they justified mm -hmm. in doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to address my comment go, go, to that. Go. The 1964 Civil Rights Act primarily uh, does a lot of things. It gives us equal employment opportunities, but what we're talking about now, the sit-in mm -hmm. demonstrations, mm -hmm. what it did, it made it illegal mm -hmm. to discriminate against black people mm -hmm. or, or, or in public accommodation facilities. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, everyone could participate in public accommodation facilities, not regard to their mm -hmm. race, their national origin, mm -hmm. religion, or creed. And that's a direct result of the sit-in demonstration movement mm -hmm. uh, uh, by all the students in the mm -hmm. South. Where's the justification for passing such a law? Mm -hmm. The argument was made at the time by the owners of the, these establishments. Mm -hmm. This is a free democratic Good. country. Mm -hmm. No government can tell me who I can and cannot admit to my own establishment because mm -hmm. it's mine. That mm -hmm. sounds okay, mm -hmm. but looking at Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, it says that Congress shall regulate commerce, mm -hmm. and that is saying that Congress can regulate the physical movement of goods. Mm -hmm. In a union case in 1936 that had nothing to do with the Civil Rights Act, mm -hmm. in the case of NLRB versus Jones mm -hmm. and Laughlin, that clause yeah. was interpreted to mean not only can Congress regulate commerce, mm -hmm. but Congress can regulate any activity mm -hmm. that directly and materially affects the physical mm -hmm. movement of goods, mm -hmm. including racial activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if closing down the heart of Atlanta Hotel mm -hmm. because of the sending demonstration mm -hmm. adversely affects every pen, mm -hmm. every toothpick, mm -hmm. every roll of toilet paper mm -hmm. manufactured in some other state, that would have come through commerce to Atlanta, that hotel, if it had not been for the city movement that mm -hmm. stopped the hotel from receiving it. Mm -hmm. So you can see that racial activity is an activity that directly and materially mm -hmm. affects but, the physical mm -hmm. movement of goods. Mm -hmm. Now, once we establish that point, Congress now, under Article 1, Section 8, mm -hmm. can come in and regulate that activity. Mm -hmm. They decided to regulate that activity mm -hmm. by passing the 1964 Civil Rights Act and mm -hmm. says, that you cannot discriminate against people as it relates to mm -hmm. uh, public accommodation Domination. facilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in a perfect position to understand uh, why they felt it necessary to mm -hmm. pass such a law, because mm -hmm. SNCC was putting that kind of pressure on government mm -hmm. to react. Mm -hmm. But now as an attorney, I know the legal basis, the justification mm -hmm. that was used to make such a law constitutional. Mm -hmm. It was based upon Article 1, Section 8 
mm -hmm. the Commerce Clause. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and of course, uh, that's why the uh, Interstate Commerce uh, Commission became involved. Explain uh, how, how well, that now, uh, commission... Well, ICC is mm -hmm. really uh, created uh, to regulate railroads, uh -huh. so it had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be used for mm -hmm. that purpose mm -hmm. now. You see? Well, what, what about buses? When, when well, buses... That's the uh, freedom uh, movement. Uh -huh. Well, that, that, that comes much after mm -hmm. the sit-in demonstrations. Mm -hmm. the free, I think the freedom rides take place around by 1966. Mm -hmm. John Lewis is no longer chairman of SNCC in 1966. I mm -hmm. think uh, Stokely Carmichael becomes the chairman mm -hmm. of, of, of SNCC in 1966. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what's happening to SNCC, mm -hmm. an unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. The purposes for which SNCC was organized mm -hmm. no longer exist. Mm -hmm because government has passed the law mm -hmm. to achieve the very objectives that, mm -hmm. that justify the organization of SNCC. Mm -hmm. So SNCC now is searching for its identity. Mm -hmm. And it's going to all kinds of different avenues to try to find some other justification mm -hmm. to continue to exist, you, okay. you mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the activity wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So finally, we have somebody who comes upon the scene named Rap Brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and his people, mm -hmm. they come up with these radical, uh, uh, in my judgment, mm -hmm. outrageous ideas. Mm -hmm. Be and and Snick had lost his identity, mm -hmm. and so Rap Brown just transformed Snick into mm -hmm. an organization that was no longer recognizable mm -hmm. by the college students and so forth. They helped found it. Mm -hmm. Bond was no longer a member of it. Stoker Carmichael was no longer a member of it, mm -hmm. uh, and John Lewis and so forth. Rep. Mm -hmm. Brown uh, had his people to take the word nonviolent out of mm -hmm. the, the actual name. Mm -hmm. So now it's known as Student Coordinate Coordinate Committee. Committee. Mm -hmm. That indicated to the whole world mm -hmm. that they accepted violence as a technique. Mm -hmm. Toward what goal? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. But it was at that time, I was in the military. Mm -hmm. I was in Vietnam, in, I believe, in 1966. Mm -hmm. I was coming out of mm -hmm. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So I kind of missed that side mm -hmm. of the revolution mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, Stoker Carmichael, when he was the chairman of S SNCC, mm -hmm. he's the one that coined the phrase black power. Okay. And that scared all of the segregations. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't scare white Americans. Mm -hmm. It scared the white segregations, mm -hmm. you see, because deep down inside, they had this guilt complex Mm -hmm. about black people in a way because mm -hmm. of the mistreatment that they imposed upon mm -hmm. them. They always worried about payback. Mm -hmm. They always worried about if you give these black people too much freedom, they're going to pay us back. Mm -hmm. And we never worry about that mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I'm not angry. Mm -hmm. I, I have no anger. And you see John Lewis is a congressman mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And Julian Bond, who is the son of an educator, Horace Bond, who was the president, mm -hmm. uh, uh, first black president mm -hmm. uh, uh, of Lincoln University mm -hmm. private college in Chester County, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You see, so we all come out of a middle cl class background mm -hmm. and we have no anger. Mm -hmm. uh, all we wanted to do was demand that we have the opportunity to mm -hmm. participate in the bountiful goodness of life mm -hmm. that this nation has afforded to everyone. The last two minutes, uh, what would you say to uh, young people today about uh, continuing this legacy of uh, trying to have justice done for uh, African Americans, whether, you know, sit in or whatever. I mean, what, first, what? first, you got to identify what is the injustice. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and racism today is very subtle. Mm -hmm. And it's been furthered by our own conduct. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself the question as black people, mm -hmm. what is it that we can do mm -hmm. To improve our own uh, ability mm -hmm. to 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 uh, to uh, operate successfully in, in in the United States of America, mm -hmm. uh, are we studying like we should? Uh, are we spending all our time talking negative things mm -hmm. like uh, 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 making our women look like prostitutes mm -hmm. and whores mm -hmm. in these in these uh, in these uh, BET uh, uh, mm -hmm. video uh, mm -hmm. musical things and mm -hmm. so forth, are we guilty of self-destructive behavior? Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, we demand in the world to respect us. Mm -hmm. Well, the respect is something that has to be earned. We mm -hmm. knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be given. So until such time, we check our own behavior. Mm -hmm. and not engage in school riots, which I think has been prominent in the newspaper mm -hmm. uh, uh, recently, mm -hmm. then we can't demand respect. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying the first, the next civil rights movement that takes place mm -hmm. is 
to change the attitudes mm. and the ways of thinking mm. on the part of black people mm -hmm. that leads towards self-destructive mm. behavior. Very good. And of course, uh, Attorney Blackshear, let me uh, thank you over the last few seconds that we have here for giving us that uh, excellent information. And I'm sure that uh, that is, uh, in a real sense, a direction in which people can tie into to understand that it is a responsibility that uh, as <coughs> people of your generation, to, uh, of our generation, took uh, charge and wanted to uh, deal with uh, the injustices that they too have some injustices to deal with, but first they have to work in their own houses first. Is That's that right. what you're saying? And of course, let me uh, thank you and uh, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.